Hey everyone, I'm Rio Illustrates and today I'm going to show you everything I use to do my art. These are the things I use every day. I sometimes add other stuff from scroller boxes, but I've excluded all that stuff and focused on what I use to create realism and my characters. I'm currently using a Stillman & Burn 10x7, which is B5 size sketchbook for journaling and sketching and doing smaller pieces. It has 270 GSM paper and 50 pages. I absolutely love the thickness of the paper. There's no ghosting or denting from heavy usage and burnishing. I'm using the Zeta series, which has smooth type paper, but it's not too smooth and accepts many layers of pencil. I highly recommend these sketchbooks. I did have an Elo, which I don't use anymore, and it was great, but it didn't hold my pencil as well as this one. This one is even better. The super white paper makes my coloring really bright too. For my larger pieces and realism, I use the Strathmore Visual Journal in vellum. It has 300 series Bristol vellum sheets and you can use both sides of the sheets. This is amazing quality and totally required for the way I do realism. I love Strathmore paper so much. It can take me being really rough with it as well and burnishing without any bother and keeps my drawings really bright. You can also repeatedly rub out your pencil marks and do them again with no denting. There's no fading at all either, like in bullet journals I've used, and the colouring stays bright for months and months. I actually have a flip through of this journal because I've finished it now and I'll link it down below. Then we have Tone Tan. I love using this with Prismacolor pencils because they come out so bright and vibrant on it. It's really fun to draw space things and characters, but I haven't exactly got the hang of doing realism on it yet. I find the paper a bit thin for realism, well, the way I do it with the millions of layers. So I've just got this 300 GSM mixed media tone tan to see if it helps. It actually looks a lot nicer than the other one too. Next up we have Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I really enjoy how smooth this paper is, but I find my work isn't as vibrant on it. I'll show an example that I did on Bristol Smooth and stuck into my visual journal. It's not as bright as it is here in comparison with the 400 vellum. It's great for beginners though, because pencils blend much easier on it, but you do lose some vibrancy and vibrancy is super important to me. Saving the best for last, my favourite paper ever is the Strathmore Bristol Vellum 400 series. It holds the most layers out of all of these papers and my work looks super, super vibrant on it. It has a lovely grainy surface, which I hope shows up in the video, and it's slightly tougher to burnish to get flat colour. But that's a good thing for me as I accidentally find myself burnishing on the 300 series and all my colours blend even when I don't want them to. So it benefits me that you have to work harder to do that. I have two sizes, 12 by nine and 14 by 17. I don't know what the GSM the paper is because it doesn't say, but the fact that it holds so many layers of pencil, it has to be pretty good. I use Stadler pigment liners to outline all my characters before colouring them. I love them because they come in 1.0 or 1.2 size, which is exactly what I need working on 9x12 and 10x7. 
They're super black and have even ink. It doesn't pull at the end of the line like some of the fine liners do. And most importantly, they don't bleed when you use fixative either. Next up is a super chunky pencil. It's the Faber-Castell HB pencil. I believe it's the 9000 series. I use the, the chunky ones because it helps create lighter lines if you're heavy handed. I'm heavy handed due to hypermobility, so these chunky pencils help me create lighter sketching lines, which is super important when you're doing realism because you need to make sure all of it is completely erased. If you're heavy handed, I would highly recommend these. And also if you struggle with fine point control, these pencils have helped me a lot. These are Posca markers. I mostly use PC1M, but I sometimes use PC3M as well. I use the PC1M to go over all of my outlines of my characters right at the end of colouring to make my pencil colour really pop out. You can also layer them on the paper I use to make white really, really white, and they go over all of my pencils. The black photographs and videos black too without editing. I find fine liners come out grey on photos and videos, and I want it to look as black as it does in a photo as it does in real life. You can see on this picture how black the blacks look. The sharpener I use for all my pencils says M and R on it and I'm not exactly sure where it comes from because I got it from a scroller box and it's the best sharpener I've ever used. It has a really wide hole and a really thin hole. The wide hole fits my chunky pencils and is perfect for sharpening prismas and the thin one produces a lovely sharp point for polychromos and luminates. I used to use Tegal sharpeners but they blunt so quickly I had to replace them every month because they start chewing up my pencils. I don't recommend using them at all and recommend a metal one like this instead. To erase all my pencil work and correct any colour pencil mistakes, I use a kneadable eraser. The cheapest ones are the best. I think this one was 50p in WH Smith or something. And also it's super fun to play with. It will pull all the pencil off the page without leaving any marks or dust or smudges. Now to my favourite things to use ever, coloured pencils. I have the 72 set of Prismacolors, as in the UK the full set is very expensive. Last time I checked it was the same price as the full set of Polychromos, and for that price they're just not worth it. I also can't get singles of Prisma e easily either in the UK, so if I run out of one I have to get an entire set, and Prismas run out really quickly, so this is a huge problem for me. I do like Prismas and the fact they have soft cores, especially on Tone Tan, but these are my least favourite pencils for performance. They smudge bad and leave a mess everywhere. And for the fact they are so hard to get a hold of where I am in Wales, UK. The other pencils I use I can buy in a local store. I do like the colours though, they are slightly brighter than polychromos, so they're more fun for bright designs. I highly recommend Prismas if you're starting out though. It helped me a lot when I first got them to learn blending with them. In my Yusha's 216 slot pencil case from Amazon, I have my full set of Faber-Castell polychromos. These are the best all around pencils and I love them the most. They are hard cored, which allows you to get incredible detail. They're incredibly high quality, the cores are so strong I've only ever had one that wouldn't sharpen. The pigment in them is incredible and I love using them for all my dark tones and hair. With polychromos you need to layer to blend, not press hard, and by doing that the blend is almost invisible which is perfect for shadows and depth on realism pieces. Even when I use other brands of pencils I always use polychromos with them. I personally can't do realism without them. Polychromos also last a very long time before you need to replace them which is brilliant for someone like me who uses pencils every day. In the year that I've had them, I bought them on last year's Prime Day. I've only needed to replace black, pinks and one of the teals, but some of them still look brand new. I've replaced the other brands of pencils more despite using them a lot less. 
In this pencil case I also have some spares of luminance, 12 Holbein's pastel coloured pencils which I use purely for the rainbow pastel colour of them, and some Derwent Lightfast pencils from Scrawler Boxes. I really love this pencil case too, it comes with a handle and strap to carry them around, although I haven't yet risked taking my pencils anywhere anyway, but it looks super fancy. I'll link to it below. And finally, the prettiest, most illuminating pencils ever, the 76 set of Caran Dash Luminance Pencils. These pencils really live up to their name. It's how I get my drawings to glow. I use these for all the glowing stuff that I draw. They're soft cores, but much harder than Prismas, so you can sharpen them to a fine point and they won't break. You can also blend and layer them. The build quality is also absolutely wonderful. You won't get any breakages despite them being softer and I think the box they come in helps. There's support on each side of the pencil, much better than tins because tins are really bad for pencils. These are the most expensive of the pencils I own but you totally get your money's worth with the quality and performance. They also don't have a wax bloom like Prismas do, a coating that forms on top of your drawing and they're the most pigmented pencils I own. The reds are so red. You'll see a crisis journal entry I did towards the end of this video and you can see how red the reds are. They're my most favourite to use for skin tones in realism and fruit in realism. It has quite a few muddy tones which is so perfect for shadow work. They also have the highest light fastness rating. Prismas have the least so your work will stay as great as you did it for years and years. This is especially important if you sell your work or you're someone like me who does art to keep for the future to give to their children when they grow up. It's worth noting also that the light fastness doesn't work on lower quality paper. If you use these in a bullet journal for instance, they will fade and come off the page in a couple of months. So don't buy these unless you plan to use quality paper because it will be a total waste of money. When I've finished with my pencils, and they're too tiny to use even in a pencil extender, I put them in a little jar and it sits on my desk. A little jar of baby pencils. I love looking at it and keeping them in here. And finally, the last thing I have to show you is Winsor & Newton Pencil Fixative. This is what I spray my work with to keep it on the page and stop any transfer. You just shake it and spray a nice full layer of it on the page, making sure all of it is covered and then wait for it to dry. You need to make sure you're using the right pens because this stuff is kind of like hairspray, so it will make some pens bleed through the page or run. And again, you need to be using high quality paper to use it. It won't work on lower quality paper and will even make your pencil bleed through the page. That's happened to me a lot before I use the sketchbooks and paper in this video. It smells really, really bad when you first spray it, but it doesn't smell when it dries. Once it's dry, your pencil will stay on the page and won't transfer, which is super important to me because I love using both sides of the page in sketchbooks. It won't yellow and the coverage is pretty invisible. It'll even help bring out the shininess of your pencils. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all the tools I use to create my art. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll reply to them. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're new. I'll be posting another art video next. Take care, lovelies.